Welcome back. In the last screencast, I showed you how you could extract text from an image file using Google Drive. In this screencast, I'm going to show you a slightly different method uh, of doing this, um, not using Google Drive, but using a tool called onlineocr.net. And what I like about this tool is that this allows us to extract more structured data um, and do some kind of cool stuff with it. Um, I'm going to, for this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a something that I scanned out of my, my local um, alternative news weekly. We've got a, a local weekly alternative magazine called View Magazine here in Hamilton. And what I did was I scanned this. I scanned, there was a, a, what's called the View Live Muse Index. Mu <laughs> view live music index. What this is, is a list of all the live music venues in the Hamilton, the greater Hamilton region. Okay. And as you notice here, I'll actually open this up in preview just to show you, this is actually not a great quality scan. I mean, it's, it's fairly high resolution, but because you can see the, the, um, you can see the the background color there. Um, you've got that kind of the the newsprint there. This is kind of tricky. This is going to be really tricky to get. By the way, no, this isn't available. You know, on the View website. I wish. Um, so let's see what we can do with this. Okay. And this is a fairly large file too. Let's take a look at the size of this. This is my scan was about 3.5 megs. Okay. Um, and you can play around with your scanning settings. You know, you can play around. You can open this up in Photoshop. You can do all sorts of things to try to to clean it up. But let's say I've just scanned this and I want to try to extract this data. And what I'd really love is I'd love to extract this in some sort of a structured format, like um, like an Excel spreadsheet or, or, or something like that, so that I can have the name and the address and the phone number all, all separated out. And you'll see as you do more data manipulation why it's really handy to get that information like that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, uh, let's go back to Google to uh, our web browser here. We don't need that website anymore. Um, what I've done is I've gone to onlineocr.net. This is a site that has, it's a free site, although if you want um, to get some of the more advanced functionality, you do need to pay for credits, but there's a lot you can do just with the with the free version. Um, I'm logged in right now. If you're not logged in, you can use this without being logged in, without creating an account, um, but they do limit the file size, um, and I think they limit you to something like 50 15 scans per hour or something to that effect. So um, perfectly fine if you just have one short one image to to convert um, you don't need to have an account you can just go there and, and pop it in and, and it'll work fine because my file is pretty big this file right here um, that I want to scan I actually had to create an account. Um, and when you create an account, you start off with with uh, 20 free credits, and that will be perfectly fine for what we want to do right now. Okay, if you find yourself using this tool a lot, then it might be worthwhile for you to buy credits. But for just kind of casual purposes, perfectly fine to just go in and, and use the free credits. That's fine. Okay, so here we go. I've logged in. This is what you see um, as soon as you log in, and uh, you you have these options where you can select the recognition languages. And this is handy, right? Obviously, if you're if you're um, if you're trying to extract information from a from an image and it's a different language, it's going to be a lot it's going to be a lot easier if you actually tell the online OCR what language you're trying to extract from. In this case, it's just English, so that's pretty straightforward. What we want to do, though, is we want to pay attention to this part right here where it says output formats, um, because let's have a look at the data here that I'm trying to extract. Okay, because this data is in rows or it's in columns like that, roughly speaking, it would be, I, I think it makes a lot more sense to try to extract this data. Let me go back to my web browser um, in some sort of a, a spreadsheet format. And the closest option we have here is MS Excel, Microsoft Excel. That's perfectly fine. Um, even though I don't have Excel, I've got LibreOffice and LibreOffice will open that file. No problem. Um, ultimately, ultimately, my goal is going to be to get a CSV file with all of this data in it. Okay, so I can start building a database of live music venues in Hamilton. Um, so I've selected my output format as Microsoft Excel. That's great. Okay. Um, and this isn't a multi-page document. It's just the one. A multi-page document would be if you had multiple, like a PDF with multiple pages. In this case, it's just, just a JPEG. And I'm going to choose the file. And where's my file? My file is right here, View Live Music Index. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, upload this. Okay. 
And it does take a little bit of time, okay? But fortunately, you get the little uh, progress bar down at the bottom here telling you how long it's taking because it is uploading this. And there will be a little bit of time to recognize the data as well, too. And you need to also understand that this is not perfect, okay? There will always be some data cleanup you have to do, but um, the point is to get you as far along as you can in the process to minimize the amount of manual work you have to do. Okay, so I've uploaded this. Now what do we do? Well, we've uploaded that and the system recognizes, yes, this is 3.46 megabytes. That makes sense. We're going to click the Recognize button, just making sure we've selected English. In this case, because I've got structured data, it's those columns, I'm going to select Microsoft Excel and see how well online OCR can recognize this data. So let's go ahead and click the recognize button and it is processing and once again you get a little status indicator there telling you how what it's working on and it's working on it. You do have to be patient while this is happening. Do, do, do. Okay, so this used up one of my credits to do this. No big deal. Okay, it tells me is a little um, uh, a little kind of some stats here telling me I've, yeah, I've uploaded one document, it's recognized one document, one page recognized. Okay, and this is the date when I did it. Here's the file right here. Shall we see how this worked out? Okay, I'm going to click on this and it's just downloading it straight to my default downloads folder. I will hide that and why don't I go ahead and close that. Let's go to my downloads folder and see what's going on here. Okay, I've got an Excel file. Why don't I pop that onto the desktop and see what this is like. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open that up in LibreOffice to see what this looks like. Hey, this isn't bad. Now, you see what it did here? It actually tried to keep quite a bit of the formatting, um, the, the background color, all that sort of stuff. And that's not necessarily useful to us. What else? There's different sheets. Oh, look, there's other information on this sheet as well, too. Now, see, and it, there's some, some information over onto this sheet. Okay, good to know. Um, so this is where the data cleanup part comes, in, comes into play. But bear in mind, this is going to be a lot easier to clean up than, you know, starting from this and literally, if you, you know, typing that out by hand, you know, what's the other option? You know, maybe hiring someone else to type it out by hand if you wanted to. Um, so let's do some data cleanup. OK, and I'm going to fly through this fairly quickly because this is the screencast isn't really about um, data cleanup. Um, that's that's a topic for another day. Um, but one of the first things I can do here is I can probably consolidate all this information onto one sheet. OK, and I'm not going to worry too, too much about the order of things right now. I'm just going to copy that. That was just a command. X. I'm going to just paste this down here. Okay. I'm not worrying about the order because the whole point of trying to get all this data structured is to eventually have this so that I can sort it and, and you know, work with the data in a, in a reasonable way. Um, okay. Let's get this data here. I'm going to copy this and let's paste this down here. Okay. That's looking good. Don't worry too much about form, you know, fonts and things like that. Um, while we're at it, how about this right here? This looks like I could probably copy this and paste this down here. Okay. And then what else do we have here? I'm just going to stretch this open a bit. And okay, for some reason here, it looks like it didn't catch that second column. So we're going to have to manually take those phone numbers out at some point, but that's not the end of the world. We can certainly do that. In the meantime, I'll just put that there. Okay. I think that's all the data. How many records do we have? We have about 200, 193 records. Yeah. The, oh, no, we're missing some. There's right here. Yeah. I thought there were 200. So let's go back down here and boom, look at that. Okay. Am I missing anything else? Am I missing any other records? Was there anything in here? No. Anything here that we're missing? No. Anything here? No. And oh, there's something right here. I think we might have to manually put that in. That's okay. I'll go ahead and do that. Okay. We're going to clean all this up. Okay, let's pop that in there. And obviously this is an example of a, a record that the online OCR had a really hard time with. Uh, but most of these did a pretty good job. You know, Dirty Dog Saloon. Okay, that's cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this as a new file. So I'll say um, Hamilton Music 
venues, okay, and why don't I do this? Why don't I save this in a CSV file? That's just comma separated values. And why do I want to save it in a CSV file? Because that's a real fast way of getting rid of all this formatting. I don't need the gray background. I don't need the, the bold. I don't need any of that stuff. I just want the data itself. So let's take a shortcut, let's save this as a CSV file, and that should get rid of everything and see, in fact, LibreOffice is saying, hey, this document may contain formatting or content that cannot be saved in the currently, so yes, exactly, because I don't want that formatting anymore. Let's use CSV, that looks good, we'll go okay. Only the active sheet was saved, and that makes perfect sense. We moved everything over to the sheet, so that's fine. If I'm going too fast, don't worry about it. Um, I just want to demonstrate taking this out. Let's open this up now. Oh, this is the wrong one. Hamilton Music Venues. Is this the one we just created? This is the one we just just created. Yes. Yeah, so let's go ahead and open that up in LibreOffice. And did I open that up in LibreOffice? There it is. Hamilton. Oh, close. I didn't close the other one. Let's try this again, shall we? Okay. There we go. Okay looking good okay I don't like all of that stuff all capitalized so the nice thing is we can actually go to format no where do we go edit where is this again we go to uh, change case I was under the right place format change case let's do capitalize every word that's a lot easier to read isn't it Okay, and with a little bit of extra work using this and a combination of uh, some clever hacks and text wrangler, we could end up with something that looks like this. Let's open this up. Okay, so I did this earlier today. It probably took me about 10 minutes to get it to this point where I've got the um, the name of the venue right here, the street address, the city, and the phone number right here. This actually, I did the exact same thing that I just demonstrated in today's screencast, um, and then I did a, couple, did a couple extra tweaks using Text Wrangler, which I've used in a previous screencast, um, just really nice for doing some nice data cleanup, and there's some extra little automated data cleanup things I could do, but there we go, we've got the beginnings of a nice database here, 200 records, um, yeah, not bad, eh? So, um, Hopefully that was helpful to you, but uh, bear in mind the website to use so to keep to have bookmarked is onlineocr.net, and it's really good when you're trying to the to extract data that has specific types of formatting or specific structure to it. Um, I find that the character recognition it can be so-so, but it it retains the formatting, retains that that structure fairly well. Um, in some cases, better than Google Drive. So what you're going to want to do is there's two tools there: onlineocr.net as well as Google Drive. If if you've got data you want to extract from a, from a text or from a um, an image file, try them both out and see which one is better. You may be surprised. Um, there are other tools out there too. Um, a lot of them are paid tools, but I wanted to get you started with some free tools uh, just to add that to your arsenal of data management tools. I hope that that has been helpful. I know that was a bit of a long one, but hopefully that was helpful to you. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.